Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. Today is Thursday, which means it's time for four more questions in the Developer Q&A series. For those who don't know, every Thursday the official Eve Echoes Twitter account takes four questions that were posed by the community, gets the developers to answer them, then posts it in their weekly dev Q&A. Now, if your question is chosen, you win a month of Omega, so I do recommend getting onto the official Eve Echoes Discord or clicking the link in the description. It's also in all of the, uh, the Twitter posts for the developer Q&A and asking your own questions to find out what is going to come soon in Eve Echoes. On that note as well, if you have any questions, do check through. Um, I have a developer Q&A playlist on this channel. You can go through and have a look at some of the other recent events to see what has been going on, because this is every Thursday. Now, what you're seeing on screen here as well, I just wanted to celebrate with you guys, is the official Cat Skull Academy now floating in space with its own unique Cat Skull banners. I'm super proud of this. I just wanted to thank everyone that has helped build this and to pop it into space. Yes, we're going to be defending the ever-living crap out of this. I'm sure a load of people are going to want to destroy it, but hey, hopefully, hopefully people are sitting there and say, you know what, actually, it's the Cat Skull Academy. That's pretty cool. Let's leave it alone. I can hope. I can hope. <laughs> anyway, all that said and done then, let's jump into this week's four questions. This is the developer Q&A for the week of the 16th to the 22nd of June, 2021. So the first question, when will the developers add other types of mining, like gas mining and ice mining? And when will the expedition frigates like the Prospect and Endurance be expected? I think it will add a lot of diversity to industry and give more lucrative and interesting jobs for miners and industrialists. Exile responds, we will add additional mining and industrial mechanics along with other new content in future releases. Developing new content requires significant time and resources, but we've never stopped looking to create more content for everyone in New Eden. And that's a good point. I think it's important to first of all note here that he doesn't give an actual date to any of this. We know that they're not intending to do anything that's not on the roadmap um, before August. The roadmap before August is pretty chock-a-block already, um, so don't expect anything before then. We have recently had questions that moon mining is something that is intended to be added to Eve Echo soon, certainly with the aid of Capsuleer outposts that may be able to mine a moon that they're anchored to, for example, um, amongst some other things. But in EVE Online, you can also do what's referred to as gas mining and ice mining. Gas mining is where basically you collect gas clouds that are formed in space, and ice mining is, well, ice. And I know a lot of people got really excited when they saw the first screenshots of Nihilus space, because, well, if you've been inside Nihilus space, you know it looks kind of like big chunks of ice. And, yeah, these are cool new ways to go mining in EVE, um, and I would love to see them eventually added to EVE Echoes. That said, of course, we have just had Nihilus condensed spaces added to EVE Echoes, so if you are a miner looking for a bit more fun in your mining endeavours, then do fit a scanner. Fit a wide resonance scanner to your venture or your retriever or whatever. Go exploring, scan down some of those spaces, jump in and mine to your heart's content. I know that there should be more, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. Same with the Prospect and Endurance. These are ships in EVE online um, that should be added to Eve Echoes when those are added. If I recall correctly, those are ships with literal bonuses to ice mining and to, uh, to gas mining. Anyway, let's move on from that one. Can we please add a notification when one has received a new contract? Oh god, yes. There are times after ratting special anomalies with other pilots where loot is distributed days later, and you receive a contract but won't know unless you open the contracts page, and the contract will expire if not notified by other pilots that they sent you something. Absolutely agree with this. Now, it technically does notify you. If you're online at the point when someone sends you a contract, you will get a little pop-up in the middle of your screen saying a new contract has been added. Um, what Nero says here, though, is that that's a great suggestion and also something we're looking into. We'll be able to start working on this after we've finished content for August. Looks like the developers are working very hard on everything that is on that roadmap. Heck, we've got two months to get it all out. There's a lot of stuff on there, and I have done a video recently as well, well, not recently, I have done a video on everything coming in that roadmap. You'll see that we've got things like the Arena update, which is going to be adding Sisters of Even Mordu's Legion. There's another Balance update due in August, and um, we've got the LP store. We're supposed to be getting a load of new stuff added to the Scholar Pass in July, and um, we've got a whole new beginner experience with new tutorials and all that kind of thing as well. Just the Arena update on its own, though, is absolutely massive and huge. We've got Dreadnoughts coming, new Tier 10 ships, possibly. There's just so much to go through. I can't even remember it off the top of my head. 
However, so I mentioned that if you are online, yes, you get a notification saying a new contract has been added. If you are not online, however, you will not receive a notification when you log in. Now, for me, if I'm offline and someone sends me a private message, when I log back in, there is a little purple bar at the bottom flashing saying new private message. And I get a lot of these and I love getting these. I don't always get to respond to them. Sometimes I respond to three or four of them and I miss a couple. Um, so if I have ever forgotten to respond to you in a DM, please do not take it personally. Um, I just get an awful lot of these when I log in, but I would love to see that added as something for contracts. When you log into the game, there should absolutely be a little red dot on your menus telling you that there are new contracts for you to check out and accept or decline or whatever the heck you want to do with them. 100% that would be an amazing quality of life change. I've lost out on a couple of things that people have just randomly sent me recently, like scanners and some of the Breeze Nano cores, etc. Just because I didn't realise that it had actually been sent. I didn't realise, and then I see it, and it's like, oh, it's expired. And that sucks, because I now feel like someone was trying to give me a gift, and if they want to do it again, it's going to eat another load of isk in order to do it. And it's just, ah, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad they're looking into this, and I would love to see it fixed. I kind of hope this would be one that they could just do in a quick patch. I don't know, maybe there's a bit more to it than that. Anyway, let's move along to our next question, question three. Here we are. I used to like to solo story missions in my low-tier ship. The strategy, refitting, different approaches. Some took me days to finish. Learned a lot about almost every kind of mod just by dying and trying multiple times. I'm gonna pause there. There is a guy on YouTube I know who talks a lot about some like you know, different types of mods and how they all work and ship fitting guides, that kind of thing. Might want to check him out. I think his name is something like, I don't know, Captain Benzi? <laughs> <laughs> Very long time for not that much isk, but it was fun, and this I approve of. I love that someone is going out there, trying the different things in the game, having fun with it, and saying that, well, you know, the isk doesn't matter, it's the fun that matters. Now that's impossible. This is where I stop and say, it's not impossible. You, you still, it's just a different challenge. It's a different challenge now that you have to either keep an eye on local um, and be ready to warp away at a moment's notice, or you need to just have a brief bit of PvP fitting in there. I would say if you've gone into this and you've died multiple times and learnt new things about your modules and fittings, this should be an awesome new thing for you now that scanning's in. It gives you a new exciting challenge to overcome. Anyway, let's have a look at the rest of the question. Is there any plans for some kind of campaign, like the little missions in the advanced tutorial, that could teach and reward something as well? Now again, before we look at the response, I'm going to talk briefly about EVE Online, because I'm sure many of you are well aware already that there are things in EVE Online called agency missions. You basically dock at a station, there'll be a load of agents in that station who will give you specific missions. It's not like in EVE Echoes, where you have an encounter system, where you open up, and even if you're in the middle of space, you can start accepting new missions, that kind of thing. In EVE Online, you do have to dock up, and you contact an agent who supplies you that job, basically. And some of those do, you finish that mission, and then the agent will sit there and say, awesome, I've got another one for you, thank you for doing that, now we can move on to the next part. And it's usually something along the lines of, oh, some pirates have moved into the local area, we need you to go and scout them, and now that you've scouted them, let's test them and see their combat capabilities. Right, okay, we found their mining installation, go out there and blow that up, and it doesn't even matter in that one if you even kill any of the rats, if you can just fly out there, blow up the station, and then fly off to safety, that's mission achieved. And so there's a lot of cool mission variety, and kind of these little threads of storyline. Now, the missions in EVE Echoes do have have storylines with them. If you're looking at all of the missions that you go for for Sweet Poison, for example, they do kind of tie into the Sweet Poison mission and the storyline on that, but it's very roughly delivered because it's kind of all over the place. I think a structured mission system like this, like we have in EVE Online, would be amazing. And since we're getting loyalty points with the Arena update in August, who knows? Maybe that's something that we could be looking at around about then. That would be incredible. I think that would make high sec even more fun. Um, again, not as lucrative as low sec, but it would give you an actual reason to stick to high sec and do those missions and learn more about the storyline and background. You've seen recently me doing videos like the top five places I want added to Eve Echoes, because there is so much lore in New Eden that is just missing from Echoes. It's there. It's in the backstory of the universe. There's just no way to experience it in Echoes, which is a shame, and I really hope the devs are listening and get that sorted. But let's see what Kylum says. We will complete our tutorial remake first for August. Through this, uh, through this brand new tutorial, we will introduce all sorts of game mechanics and modules to new players. Based on how that goes, we'll then be able to expand these types of missions, similar to what you see in the advanced tutorial, to all players. And this would be amazing. This would genuinely be amazing. I'm really excited to get a new tutorial system added in anyway. I like the ones that teach you how webifiers work. I like the ones that teach you how afterburners and things like that work. 
I would love to see a few more of these that actually go into the details about like why you would use an afterburner or a micro warp drive, why you would shield tank or armor tank, passive tank, active tank, speed tanking, spider tanking, DPS tanking, range tanking, kiting. There is so much depth to EVE. That's what I exist for. It's why I'm here making all these videos and trying to help you guys out as much as possible. And of course it's going to eat into that, but who knows, maybe in the missions you can actually have a Captain Benzie come out and go, Hey guys, you know, ahoy there, I'm here to teach you this. And yeah, that would be amazing. Wouldn't it be awesome if they added, like, the Catskull Academy as an actual faction in EVE Echoes? I can dream, Harold. I can dream. Anyway, I think that would be really cool, and I think that having some of those kind of missions actually come into play at higher levels um, would be great too, because as I've said many times before, currently missions in EVE Echoes are essentially fly to the spot, kill the ships, wait for them to spawn, kill the next wave of ships, wait for them to spawn, kill the next wave of ships, loot and move on, if you even bother to loot. Ultimately, in EVE Online, you get all these really cool different var varied missions, and I really want to see that in EVE Echo, something that's not just blow everything up and then move on. And I hope. I can hope that that's coming in August. Finally then, are faction ships going to be able to equip nanocores? Dear God, yes, please, because they damn well need it. For example, if Rattlesnake won't be able to equip it, Dominic, Dominic's X will have more DPS than Rattlesnake, and it will be way more cheaper. That's not true. The Dominix 2 is not about to out-DPS the Rattlesnake without an insane amount of ISK spent on the upgrade materials for the nano cores um, and being lucky enough to roll the right stats. Yes, if you roll the right stats through, the Dominix can theoretically out-DPS the Rattlesnake. If you've looked at how much that's going to cost you in ISK, however, it might just be cheaper to buy the Rattlesnake. Genuinely, we've worked it out that some of these nano cores, like, for example, the Thermomagnetic Storm, if you wanted to take the Thermomagnetic Storm on something like a Tempest and roll all six of its secondary abilities, it's going to cost you in the multiple billions of ISK. At which point, why are you not just flying a Macariel? That would be my answer. However, faction ship nanocores will be available starting September, says Lance Dot, and there is a hooray from Benzi. But we will first release better nanocores for various ships in our next event pass later in July. Our next event pass. This means Concord Pass, when it finishes halfway through July, will be starting with a new one that's going to have a load of new stuff in it there, including nanocores for the ships, I think like the Raven and the Dominix, which of course are currently missing proper nanocores from this week's, uh, this week's, this current uh, Concord Pass. That's not to say that they don't have nanocores. I think a lot of people are go going a little bit off the wall saying, oh, it's so unfair, the Dominics and the Raven don't have nanocores. No, they do. They just don't have the free ones. And I get that that's an issue. I get that it's not much fun for you to sit there in a Dominix or a Raven and look at everyone else with their Tempest or their Apocalypse getting the Thermomagnetic Storm nanocores and it having some cool bonuses. I get that. I genuinely do get that. And I sympathize with you. I 100% do. I'm sitting there on my main character going, I wish there was something like a thermomagnetic storm for some of the frigates. There aren't. I, I've got Breeze now, of course. I've built a few of like the Angel Veterans uh, ones for like the Hurricane, um, and I'm in the process of working towards some for some of my other ships. Um, those do still exist. If you are flying a Dominix, look at the Serpentis Veteran or Serpentis NSO or whatever it is, NCO core, the Serpentis cores. They are pretty powerful and some of those look really cool and do some very interesting things on the Dominix. Same with the Raven, you've got the Gurustus skins. Uh, Gurustus nano cores, those are worth looking into. They do some really cool stuff. Um, and honestly, I think the Gurustus ones on the Raven, the Gurustus NSO look, NCO looks insanely cool, like genuinely insanely cool. Um, but it's nice to see that, yes, nanocores will be coming for the faction ships starting September, because they 100% need it. Ultimately, if you're looking at any of the faction frigates, all of them theoretically become outclassed, both in deep terms of DPS and survivability, arguably utility, by the two interceptors. So, like, the uh, the Atron 2 interceptor will out-DPS the, uh, the, uh, the Daredevil. For example, yes, of course, the Daredevil gets those bonuses to its webifiers, which the Atron, uh, Atron 2 interceptor doesn't have. But does that really matter in the long run when everyone's going to be running interceptors and you can, you know, they'll they'll be doing better because they've got nano cores and just better stats? Arguably, yes, the crew war, the succubus, and the worm and the daredevil do still have a place due to their unique bonuses. Unfortunately, our dear friend the Dramiel does get completely outclassed in every single way that counts by the slasher two interceptor, and it's kind of the same with the stabber two. The stabber two compared to the cinnable 
the Stabber 2 is going to be cheaper and it's going to be better in the long run. Um, which is just depressing. It's really depressing because then you look at some of the others, like for example the healer, the Gurustus healer, um, that is still going to be a great ship even at Tech 10. Um, most of them start to come a little bit closer. The, the na nano cores on Tech 10 ships brings them very close to faction ships for a fraction of the cost. But yeah, for the Angel Cartel, unfortunately, the Dramiel and the Cinnabal do pretty much get outclassed by their Minmatar Tech 10 variants, which is a shame. Those really need a rework. Anyway, I'm in the process of going on a long rant here about faction frigates. Um, I definitely think I need to put out a video on everything wrong with the Angel Cartel because they are the most problematic faction right now in so many different ways. Not just the ships themselves, but also just in terms of the anomalies being some of the most difficult to complete and the least lucrative as they have been nerfed over and over again. There's less and less stuff in them. Anyway, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, let me know what you think of uh, these different questions and responses in the comment section. Make sure that you check out the uh, the link in the description to go and ask your own questions to the developers. If you're lucky enough to get chosen, not only do you get featured on a video having my awesome voice read out your question, rip it apart and give a cool answer, um, you'll also win a month of Omega, which I personally think is awesome. Anyway, folks, thank you for listening all the way to the end on this one. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden!